Now, a couple years ago, I created a video called Getting Started with Mastercam Lathe for MLC CAD Systems here. And it uh, had some really good results, but there were some things that I didn't cover. And I am going to go back and kind of do an overview of the lathe a little bit. So starting off with a lathe overview, let's go ahead and we're going to load Mastercam. And I have my Parasolid file here, the X underscore T file. I'm going to simply drag and drop that into my graphics window. And it comes in already aligned. We're going to go to the machine tab at the top, over to the machine type group, and we're going to load a default lathe. Let's go ahead and drop down the properties, and we're going to go to the stock setup. And in this stock setup, I'm going to load a left spindle, left spindle chuck jaws, and we're going to go a little bit further and start loading uh, tail stock centers as well, and we'll be working with the tail stock center within this part. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the properties. And inside of my properties, I got a four inch diameter stock. If you're not too sure what to do, we can also say make from two points. And if I hit O on my keyboard, it automatically goes to the origin as well as Q. If you notice where my auto cursor function is, once I hit Q, it goes to quadrant there. So I'm just kind of using some shortcut keys. Now I had four inches in here because I'm most likely not going to get bar stock like this. So I'll say four. And we'll use margins. I'll add a hundred thousandths to the front and the back of the part. And I'll say OK. Next, let's go ahead and correct our jaws here. Now, I'm going to simplify this just for this particular part. I'm going to have a half inch width for my jaws. And if you notice, when I hold down my middle mouse button, I got a flat surface. I know the diameter is four inches. I'm going to give it a two inch radius. Hit enter. And now my chuck jaws will be the same radius of my part stock here. Let's go over to our parameters. And I'm simply going to say from stock so that it knows to shift from that point here, the high point in that radius, to my stock. And I'll give it that grip length of a half inch. We can preview the boundary. You know what, let's say top view. There we go. And that looks good. I'm going to green check on this. And the last thing I want to do inside of this stock setup, we're going to go to the properties for the tail stock. Now, I already had these predefined from a previous uh, operation here. But I'm going to leave this for default. I got my diameter, center length, 60 degree point angle, and the 12 inches away from my WCS. If I was to preview this lathe boundary, kind of zoom out, we can see our tail stock over here to the right. I'm going to hit escape, and let's just green check out of this. And then we're going to save our part. At the end of the day, save is your friend. We're going to go to the lathe tool manager in the utilities group. And instead of loading a bunch of tools in from the default library, I actually have a library with the tools that I want to use for this particular part. So I'm going to go search for my library. And you'll notice the libraries all have a .toolDB extension to them. So let's go here. And I'm going to look for my lathe tools. I got my lathe tools dot tool DB. I hit open. And with my filters off, you can see all the tools that I do have in this library. I'm simply going to highlight and drag all these up. I can also hit the up arrow here. Or if it's single tools, I could even double click and have it add. Now, the same thing applies the other way. If I was to create a tool here, no matter if it was 3D or a simple 2D tool, I can also drag that tool back down into the library and save this for future use later.